Let's talk about London dispersion forces. The key word we need to learn here is called polarizability. So let's consider a helium atom, for instance. Helium is a small element, right? Two protons, two electrons. They're moving around randomly in this electron cloud. And so based on simple probability due to the random motion, right, it's possible for those two electrons to end up on the same side of the atom for one particular second in time. Yes, just based on simple probability, we can have those two electrons on the same side. For, so for that split second, we have what's formed uh, an instantaneous dipole, which means for that split second, this side of the atom is positive and this side of the atom is slightly negative, right? That delta, lowercase delta, just means partial. So for that split second, this atom, which we would not expect to be polar, for that split second, it acts like it is polar. And so it would be attracted to another atom nearby that could also be exhibiting an instantaneous dipole. So the word we use to describe this is called polarizability. Uh, as we increase the number of electrons, we're going to increase polarizability, right? Because if you have more electrons, you increase probability that you could have those short second instantaneous dipoles. Now let's look at London dispersion forces in hydrocarbons. Okay, so when we're looking at hydrocarbons, we have two factors to consider, the chain length and the shape of the molecule. So let's look at two linear hydrocarbons. We have hexane versus dodecane. Right, there's a six carbon chain, and just imagine hydrogens on all these little spots here, okay, versus a 12 carbon chain. In the 12 carbon chain, just think about it from the polarizability standpoint, right? If these are all stacked on top of each other, nice and neat, because these are linear, you're going to have a greater probability of London dispersion forces, right? Longer chain, longer um, stacking on top of each other. They're nice and linear, so they're stacked nice and neat on top of each other. And so you would have a much higher boiling point for the 12 carbon chain versus the 6 carbon chain. Now let's look at a linear shape versus a branched shape. So both of these are isomers of C5H12. Okay, one of them is linear and one of them has a T shape. Now when you look at these, these are not going to stack on top of each other nice and neat, right? They're going to be kind of awkward. They're going to be boxy on top of each other. Whereas the linear straight chain is going to be nice stacking. So you would expect the linear chain to have a higher boiling point than the branch chain. And the reason for this is these are going to be in greater contact with each other, right? If these are stacked on top of each other, then when you have those instantaneous dipoles um, for those split seconds where you have London dispersion forces, if they're in greater contact with, uh, contact with each other, you will have a higher boiling point. These are in less contact with each other because they can't stack on top of each other nice and neat. So you would expect the branched hydrocarbon to have a lower boiling point. 